Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy Douglas, or you could call me Freedom. I am proud to announce that my official website is now up and running. Yes, you heard me here. My official website is up and running, freedomsavageentertainment.net. This website took forever, a lot of planning, a lot of creativity. Make sure you guys subscribe to my website for updates on anything that I'm doing. And you guys will still see changes made to it over time. All of the links to all of my stuff is on the website. It's gonna basically be my creative hub and I can't wait to, you know, show you guys how this empire that I have will develop over time. All right, make sure y'all head to the website because it's definitely given what it's supposed to. Peace out. Thoughts. I wanna hear your sound And mama always told me to shout And speak my mind out loud Come on and talk when you got the time Freedom once you on the line We wanna hear from you You gotta go and Let your voice shine Platform yours is not just mine We wanna hear from you You gotta go and Talk to me Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy Douglas, or you could call me Freedom. Welcome to my channel. This is season two, episode six of my podcast. Before we get started, make sure that you guys like, comment, and share this video, and subscribe to my channel because you need me and them. This is Huggy Wuggy, Dave, Ben, Jack, and I actually didn't name this one yet, but this is my pillow plush. We might as well address the elephant in the room. Yes, my room is 80% renovated now. It's giving exactly what it has to, and I'm totally happy about it. I originally wanted to do a nature aesthetic with my room. It was inspired by Kehlani and Blue Water Road and just that entire era that she's in. Been loving her looks on the tour, by the way. Please get into Kehlani when y'all get the chance. But I really wanted a nature aesthetic for my bedroom, but... It was gonna take too much time and money. And then when everything happened last summer, that entire idea and wish kind of went out the window. So I decided to go a different route with my room. I decided to go more in a lo-fi route just because I've been sleeping to a lot of lo-fi music lately. And I kind of wanted my room to give that aesthetic. Now I am planning on getting my ass up out of here in the future. So I don't really see myself staying in this room for a long time. But I did want that my space is comfortable for me, you know, because this room is my workspace and it's my place of sanity. And I wanted that the environment of my room emphasizes that, you know? Yes, this mic is not hooked up to anything, but I decided to have it because I want to. <laughs> I know I've been gone for like a solid month, but it was for good reasons. Uh, the holidays came up and I actually spent the time making the entire dinner and doing all of the decoration planning for my family. My siblings weren't really in the holiday spirit, so I kind of had to like, I didn't have to, but I wanted to um, try to get them in the spirit because, you know, it's tough. We get it, it's the first holidays without my mom physically being here. And I just wanted everybody to be as happy as possible. So for the holidays, I took it upon myself to spend the time doing all of the decoration planning and cleaning and cooking. And I did just that. My brother actually told me that the food tasted like my mom had made it and that warmed my heart a lot. I would say that we're way, all of us, including me, are way better than what we were a few months ago. Her passing and stuff is still fresh, you know, we still miss her a lot, but uh, we've been living, we've been doing as much as we could to remain happy and creating great, great memories. My mom's birthday was actually last weekend and uh, we had a lot of fun. Her friends came together for the first time in a while and everybody just turned up. We were having a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. My voice actually almost became hoarse. I had to wait a day to even do this podcast, to be honest with y'all. I go, y'all. Also, thank you guys so much for the love that you guys have been giving my singles, Talk To Me, and 741. We'll be doing more of a deep dive into 741 and how the song actually came about in my Q&A session. I haven't done Freedom's Q&A session in a while, and I'm so glad to bring it back and revive it. As you guys could already tell with the video, I decided to go a different 
different route with the podcast. I'm gonna be doing more videos where it's more one-on-one, -on -one, just me and you guys, just so I can help form more of a bond with you guys. And I'll be doing more Freedoms Q&A sessions, so you guys will be able to ask me more questions. And I believe some of you guys did ask me questions on 741. I had someone else arrange my questions for me. That way I could answer them in like an order. I have them right here, so I think it's time that we get into it. So the first question is, was it hard writing the song about your mom? Was it difficult to express the pain as you're actively grieving? Or did it feel like an outlet and a release? This question is pertaining to 741, which I just released. Again, thank you guys for the love. Believe it or not, I was actually not trying to write 741 at all. The song was written unexpectedly. I was not planning to write a song about my mom. I was not planning to put out a song about my mom. I wasn't trying to go that route because I kind of felt like that was normal to expect from an artist. <laughs> it ended up happening. Basically, a producer reached out to me a couple of months ago. Shout out to Beefy808. He was the one who produced the instrumental for 741. For any of my upcoming artists out there, I'll leave a link to his website down in the description below. I came across this lo-fi instrumental and I fell in love with it. As soon as I heard the instrumental, the lyrics kind of just poured out for me. So I wrote the song consciously, but unconsciously at the same time. It's like, obviously when you're writing a song, you know what you're writing, but it didn't actually click to me that I had formed 741 until I sung it back and did a draft to it. When I sung it back and did the draft, I was emotional. I shed a little tear because I started to just get flashbacks to all of the memories and good times that my mom and I shared. Even last year, in the beginning of last year, I was going on vacation and everything with my mom and always by her, watching movies with her, laying next to her. And then later on in the year, I'm writing about her passing. And it's just like, that was mind blowing to me, you know? That was really where the emotion came from. Just the fact that earlier last year you were here and now it's the end of the year and you know, we don't physically have you anymore. It wasn't difficult to express my pain just due to the fact that I'm a Pisces and I'm very outspoken, like my mom. I'm Coretta's son. <laughs> I'm not the type of person to keep my emotions or feelings hidden. I always speak my mind on how I feel. It wasn't that difficult because some of the lyrics were stuff that I have vented to actual people, such as my friends and family and stuff like that. But I will say that 741 is almost like the leftover thoughts that I had in my mind, you know? Thoughts that did cross my mind that I felt like, not that I couldn't say, but I have this thing where sometimes I feel like my messages get more across when I sing it. Let me pause real quick and actually remind you guys to just forgive my background. My brother makes a lot of noise and the cars in the background have been going crazy. So again, please, please, please forgive me. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I felt like 741 was more of just the leftover thoughts that I never really vocally explained to people just because I felt like the message would better get across if I sung the words other than spoke them. I just have that thing about myself. I just feel like certain things that I want to say, I feel like connects to people more when I sing it. So yeah, I would say that the song was some sort of release for me, you know? Second question. I always wonder as the youngest child, when the doctor said that she can go any minute, how did you prepare yourself? I knew you were home when you got the call. So what was crazy is, and I was actually just telling my friend this yesterday, shout out to Claudia. Um, Claudia has been a big, big, big supporter of mine. One of my friends that's been supporting me a lot since she passed. All that week, there were like little hints that she wasn't coming home and that something was gonna happen to her. The doctors were giving the hints and I just read it, you know? I, you know how sometimes where you could just read an environment or like read the room? And just a lot of the stuff my mom even said to us because my mom knew something was going to happen to her. Even that entire week, she was feeding us things to do, stick together, be responsible, you know? Like she, she knew that something was going to happen to her. Every single day my mom was in the hospital, I always told her, are you ready to come home and stuff like that? She was like, hell yeah, I'm ready to come home. My mom did not think for a second that anything was going to happen to her. But the last time I spoke to her, she told me, when I asked her the question, I said, do you think you're gonna come out of the hospital? And she said that she believed in God. And right then and there was when I realized that she had mentally told herself that she was gonna be ready for whatever and that 
she knew deep down inside that something was going to happen to her. She just didn't want to scare us. She told us not to come back to the hospital. She told us to kind of just let her go, you know, because she didn't want us to have to deal with that trauma or that burden. I was home with my brother, keeping an eye on him the day she passed, but my siblings had the unfortunate experience in actually seeing her go. I actually get more into that in my 741 lyric breakdown video that I'm going to also leave at the end of this video and in the description below. Yeah, I felt like all that week I was getting hints. All that week I was being told that it was a possibility that she could be at that end of her life. We were told earlier that week that she wasn't coming home. Her vitals were going up and down. So it was really hard to make note of pretty much anything. And I remember crying and like getting all of my cries and emotions out that week. Not that I didn't cry any less when she passed because at the end of the day, that's my mother. But I felt like I was so prepared. You never really get prepared for something like that to happen. But I felt like the adjustments I had to make that week alone, I had to tell myself she can go or she could recover. I had to accept the reality of things. Because I did a lot of that prep for myself, it helped me to grieve easier. Actually, out of my entire family, I'm grieving the easiest. Doesn't mean that I'm not just as hurt as anybody else. I'm taking it lighter than I expected to. But that was really just through the help of therapy and my mom, you know, my mom prepared us all. Being the youngest child, it was a shock to me. Even when I got the call that she had to go back on life support the day before she passed, I froze. And even when I got the news that she passed from my sister, I froze. I froze, I dropped my phone, and I just remember crying. Claudia came and hugged me, and my sister, two friends, they came, they ran into the room and hugged me. And I feel like as the youngest, to hear that your mom passed, it was very scary and very heartbreaking. But I did prepare myself. Why did you title the song 741? Loved it, by the way. <laughs> um, so I titled the song 741 because it was the room of the ICU. It was the, you know how like in a hospital, some rooms will be probably like named by letters or numbers. Her ICU room was labeled 741. Like if you like on the visitors passes and stuff, they'll say that you're going to room 741. So that's where the name, the number 741 came from. I felt like because that's where everything started, it just made sense to me. I also wasn't even really worried too much about the name. Like it was one of those things where like, I didn't really have a name for the song. I wrote the song first. And then once I thought about it, I was just like 741. <laughs> but I also began to realize the spiritual meaning behind 741 with the help of my god sister Quay. Shout out to Quay. <laughs> was able to also understand the spiritual meaning, just what each number represents, you know, in spiritual terms, of course. Let's move on to the next question. I think that was the end of the 741 questions. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um... It's so weird. You know, since my mom passed, I was a planner. I always plan things. You know me, you know I plan things. I spent my entire life being a planner, always thinking about years from now, you know? But since my mom passed, I've kind of been on this tangent where I've been really going day by day with my life. I don't really worry too much or care too much about the future like I used to. But if I really had to answer this question, I would say that in five years, I see myself getting my master's, already having my bachelor's, mainly completing college. Um, I see myself way more financially stable. I see myself more mature than now. I see myself way more stable than now um, in every aspect of my life. I see myself more known as an artist with a bigger fan base more known in the music world, if not famous and stuff already. And I just see myself doing more me, you know, just doing more me, living my life the way I want it. Favorite artist right now. Now y'all know I don't be having no favorite artist in the moment. <laughs> I have a lot of faves that I love all the same every day, 24 seven. But um, I do have a mood playlist. So I have this playlist based off of my mood and how I'm feeling. And I'll put songs off that playlist, take songs off that playlist. 
depending on how I feel and what's the mood and what I want to listen to right now. On that playlist right now, we do have some SZA. If y'all haven't been streaming SOS, then you must have been living under a rock. Please get into SZA because she's been having us in a chokehold for the last couple of months. Stream SOS because it's good for your skin. <laughs> I've been streaming the title single SOS, Seek and Destroy. Seek and Destroy is my shit. Um, snooze. Gone Girl, Ghost in the Machine, oh, I don't know, that album is just so good, I don't know, F2F, Nobody Gets Me, SOS is on the playlist. <laughs> I don't mean to toot my own horn, but 741 and Talk To Me is also on that playlist. And because my girl Riri is going to be performing at the Super Bowl this year, I have been getting into a lot of her music again. Hopefully she drops an album this year, oh my god. I've been listening to a lot of her, a lot of her throwback singles, a lot of singles that I haven't really been listening to in the, in the last couple of years. Like songs that I haven't heard in a while, I've actually been circling back to with, with Rihanna particularly. And I've been getting into a lot of her unreleased work. Her unreleased work really slaps. That's kind of been the music that I've been getting into recently. If you could only listen to one artist for the rest of your life, who would it be? Again, impossible. But if I really, 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 really had to choose out of all my faves, I might have to go with Rihanna just because I feel like quantity wise, she has a lot of records and a lot of projects, you know? There was a moment where she was releasing an album a year. So I feel like she has a lot of timeless music. If I really, 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 really had to choose Rihanna. But you know that's not even a real answer because I got all my faves that I'm gonna be listening to forever. <laughs> New year goals. As I already told y'all before, I've been like more on a just going day by day tangent. Uh, so I haven't really been planning things, but I do see myself getting outside more this year just with performances. I would like to do more performances of my music. Um, I also just see myself overall getting out of my comfort zone this year. I want to do more music videos. Uh, let me actually get into that. I know that you guys haven't really been seeing too much visuals of just like with me inside of my videos and my music. Uh, that's on purpose. <laughs> um, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my visuals and the stuff that I would want to do creatively with a lot of my songs, I feel like I don't have the money to do. But I also know that as an artist, I have to start from somewhere. So that really shouldn't be a big excuse to why I don't do videos. But I don't know, when growing up, that was always the best part about listening to a song, the music video. You know, the music video always spoke volumes. I want that my music videos do the same thing. I don't wanna just hand you guys something half-assed. It's one of those things where I'm going in the middle with it. I'm going to give you guys more visuals where even if they're not big and like really, really what I want, Something to where it's on a budget, but it still speaks volume as a visual. And that aspect, I see myself getting out of my comfort zone and doing more visuals. There was a part of me that did get comfortable with not really having to get up and shoot a video. Kind of want to step out of that because I'm a visual person. <laughs> I'm tapping more into my classical music sound. I've been growing so much just as a classical musician in particular. I want to challenge myself to more pieces something that I'm particularly doing this year in school. So I can't wait to see how that goes because I already feel the growth in me. What are some things that are on your life bucket list? Um, so I'm assuming this probably means just like life goals in general. Other than making it big, just as a musician and actor and artist and creator, uh, I don't know. I feel like that's the only real goal. You know, that's the only real, like, you know how you throw a dart and it's just like that, you gotta hit that center. Like, that's the only thing I could think about. Like, that's the one thing that I'm really just like aiming for. Obviously, I feel like other things, just making sure my family's good, probably even starting a family one day would be nice. But I'm not thinking about none of that right now. <laughs> I'm just living my story. Like I'm just watching things unfold day by day. What are you currently struggling with in your life right now? Wow. Um, two things. Uh, one, um, I am trying to monitor my eating more. 
not out of insecurities because I know we kind of dabbled in that realm a little bit on episode one, but more just so in general, you know, I just want to eat more healthy, uh, but I also want to enjoy what I'm eating, but I also want to afford the food. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a struggle to like eat a little bit more healthy. And when I mean eating healthy, I mean just like less starches because that's really my main problem i don't really eat junk food like that and i don't drink soda and when i mean starches i mean like pastas and rice not really bread i'm not a sandwich person like that and i don't eat bread like that another thing that i would say i'm currently struggling with is paying for school can we really make college free is that like possible i mean don't get me wrong i know we're living in like this huge ass capitalist society right now and you literally need money to do damn near everything in this country and everything has just been getting so much more expensive oh my god but um i heard they increased the price on eggs just wish that there was like an easier way to go about college no matter like what you're majoring in or no matter like what school you're in college should really be free uh so just Establishing more of a financial plan to carry out the rest of college without being so much in debt when I end is kind of like the goal also. Anything else? I don't think so. I think those are like the two main things really. Other than that, uh, I guess adjusting to life also just like without my mom just having to do more things on my own. That's been a little bit of a struggle as well. Cause you know, there's something, there have been problems that I have encountered where it's like, damn, if she was here, shit would be so much easier. <laughs> Anything your younger self would be shocked that you do now? Um, I actually was thinking about this yesterday. Um, I think my younger self would really be shocked that I could sing opera now. Um, you know, opera has been something that I've always been inspired to sing since I was younger, but I never really got introduced to opera until high school. So I would say opera. I've always heard it on shows and cartoons and movies and stuff when I was younger. And I always told myself, wow, I could see myself doing opera, but I never thought I was going to get the opportunity to. And when I actually learned how to sing it, and now I'm singing it professionally in college and have grown so much as an opera singer, I think younger me would look at some of my some of my opera videos and be like, we doing this? <laughs> I mean, even me now, like I'm shocked that I could even sing some of these songs as good as I do. Like when I hear tapes back at me singing some of my opera work, I'm like, oh my God, like that voice came out of me? Something you wish people knew about you. Um, I mean, if you know me, you know me. <laughs> I don't think that I, like, do I, do I have something hidden that I don't really? I mean, I feel like many people may attest to this. And I think we kind of spoke about it a little bit on episode five. But I wish people just respected me for me. You know, all my life I got questions on who I was and people were so in my business that I just wish that when people like meet me and stuff that it's like less of the judging from the surface and everyone just saw me for me and just left it like that, you know? I know what it's like to get looked at. I still get looked at till this day just from random people. It even happened when I went out of town to uh, visit my classmate. Like I told y'all on episode one, if you take the time out of your day to pay attention to me, and I ain't paying attention to you, you are a fan of me. <laughs> I wish that people would just accept that I'm me, don't ask me any more questions, and just go on about their lives. I just wish people were more chill when it come to me. And a lot of times people are, but it always depends on who I meet. Because I have gotten to know a handful of more people in the last couple of months and I love them all dearly. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to my recent friends that I have made in the last couple of months. How are you feeling today? Um, right now I'm hot. Hello, I ain't gonna hold y'all. I don't really feel, but, oh, damn. Um, I don't really feel anything. Uh, and what I mean by that is I kind of feel regular today. Like when I woke up, I kind of was just like, hmm. I guess you could say I feel good. I think we have two more questions left. Are you talking to anyone? 
No. <laughs> I'm definitely one of those people where like, even if I was, I wouldn't tell anyone. Any pets? No, unfortunately. I am going to have pets at some point. I've been telling people since high school that when I get into college, I was going to get a black kitten and I'm going to name it Salem. I'm still trying to do that, but I now have grown this like huge love for dogs in the last couple of years. So I kind of got to see how that's going to work out because I know the whole thing with dogs and cats because I still want to have Salem, but... I also might want a puppy as well. And I don't know how that's going to work out. I do have the desire to get pets and I will get pets in the future, but I kind of got to figure things out. And that was the last question. I like them. I really like these questions. These questions were good. These questions definitely gave what it had to. I'm going to end things off right here. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you guys have any questions that you want to ask me, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. You can ask me anything. <laughs> and yeah, with that being said, there will be more music coming out soon. Continue to stream Talk To Me and 741. Thank you guys. I love you guys. Happy New Year. And I'll get back to y'all soon. Peace out.